I have a story to share before I share my vows. And the story is about Samuel Finley Brees Morse. Some of you may know who he is, some of you may not, but this is his story. He spent the first 35 years of his life learning to paint at Andover, Yale, and London, and at the Royal Academy. He studied the works of the masters to learn how Michelangelo seemed to build bodies that pulse and shudder out of more oil and shadow and crosshatch, to learn how to create illusions of time and space, to conjure the inevitable. He learned how to paint. In 1825, he was living in Connecticut with his pregnant wife and two young sons. He received a letter from a courier that said that the city of New York wanted to pay him $1,000 to paint a portrait of the Marquis de Lafayette. The hero of the revolution was coming to Washington to celebrate the 50 year anniversary of the start of the war. And he would sit for Morse if the painter could leave his home right away. So Morse packed his best clothes and left right away. A week later, Morse was in his studio in Washington preparing for the arrival of his distinguished guest. When he heard another knock on the door and another courier, breathless and dirty from a hard ride, the courier handed him the note only five words long, your dear wife is convalescent. He left that night and rode for six days straight on horseback in juddering wagons. And when he made it to Connecticut and ran up to the house through fallen leaves that fall, he learned his wife was, had already passed. That she had actually passed before the courier ever knocked on his door in Washington. She had already been buried at one morning while he was traveling back to his home. Samuel Finley Brees Morse spent the next 45 years of his life trying to make sure that nobody would feel the way that he felt that night. Samuel Finley Brees Morse spent the next 45 years inventing the telegraph to turn real space and real distance into illusion with the Morse code. That way he could transmit the stuff of real lives and of dying wives. And when I first heard that story, the only thing that I could think of is how I hope to never be that far away from you. That that situation never occurs to me. And so I vow to love you and be with you as best I can always. And I've listened to that story so many times because uh, it's sad. And I don't ever want to feel that way with, without you. So that's my promise to you to make sure that I'm always with you and that I'll always love you and I'll always do my best to take care of you. Thank you.